Hello and welcome to EBA Day 2022 in Vienna. I'm Hannah Wallace and joining me now in the studio is Dean Spasito from Deutsche Bank and we're talking about the role of correspondent banking in the future of international payments. Dean, thank you very much for taking the time out of the event to speak with us. Thank you, Hannah. It's great to be with you. Really good to have you on. So this is a really interesting topic and one that's going to be at the center of many discussions. And I want to begin by first reflecting on uh, the current geopolitical and economic landscape, because this is no doubt having an impact on correspondent banking, is it? Uh, but what's more, I want to hear about um, how this is reinforcing the importance of correspondent banking. So let's start there. Thank you. Well, first, let me remark, it's fantastic to be since the whole pandemic at an in-person event. And I have to say the vibe on the floor is really positive. So you feel a lot of energy. It's great. Um, to the question, maybe starting with just global cross-border payments. I think they will continue to increase. Mm -hmm. So if you just start there as a platform, um, that is definitely going to happen. And despite geopolitical events, despite also what we might even call like an economic reset, mm -hmm. also with environmental issues, global supply chain issues, um, they will still increase. And correspondent banking is still the most comprehensive most globally connected system for payments we have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there I think um, we have a great opportunity still to continue to grow, to continue to play a major role and to have a major impact. And maybe to the question around the geopolitics, what I see is the current events have made the world much more complex mm -hmm. and much more uncertain. Yep. And in uncertain times, I feel like our clients are looking for trusted partners to guide them through the waters. Sure. So we're having a lot of conversations on how to deal with things in a very difficult environment. And I think that's actually showing our experience, our knowledge um, is, is really then, then having a great impact mm -hmm. on that. Also at the governmental level as well, at the regulatory level also. That's right, that's right. Thank you very much for bringing us up to date there and setting the scene. Um, but coming back to correspondent banking, in the past it's often uh, been seen as perhaps rather slow, um, expensive and opaque. Would you say that this image of correspondent banking is changing? Well, I mean, I think it is. Of course, I'm a bit subjective. I'm, I, I'm a part of it. But I do think it is based on all of the developments that we've undertaken. And I would even say over like the last five years. And I think sometimes we always need to strive for more. And the disruption in the market also through fintech mm -hmm. has been a great thing. I see it as really positive. Because sure. it's also kind of forced us to move faster, to move further. But at the same time, you know, we, we tend to look at it and, and see what we can do better. But we tend not to give credit to what we actually have done. Sure. And I think over a lot of years, we have built up that global network, that comprehensive network. And the truth is, even before now some of the latest updates, we were at pretty high SDP levels. Yeah. So we did achieve a lot also there. That said, I think some of the things that we've done, um, starting with the kind of this GPI, but increasing transparency, increasing speed, um, increasing just the feedback loops with the client, also the customer service experience. Mm -hmm. um, I think the perception has changed or is changing. Sure, so you spoke about the achievements there, but I'm hearing the pain points yeah. as yes. well. So what's the response to these pain points and how is that gonna be shaping uh, the future of correspondent banking going ahead? So thank you, I mean, that's right. There are still pain points, that's very, very true. And you know, some of them are obviously on what we would call the kind of financial crime side or anti-financial crime side. Um, some of them are with KYC, and some of them are just still in this journey where we have a lot of legacy systems with a lot of static data that are just not quite as nimble as some of the kind of upstarts and, and some of the, the, the fintechs that start really on the ground with a fresh start. Yeah. Um, I think a huge thing there is really this XML language update to the ISO 2022. Yes. And I really do have to say that because I think that is going to form a new foundation on which banks can work together also with their clients, but to enrich data and to make the journey of a payment 
maybe not necessarily faster because I think th that's that's going separately anyway but certainly more comprehensive mm -hmm. better to analyze should even make it more straight through because you have more data to start and um, and I think that is actually going to to relieve some of the pain points there as well. Also, also on the AFC side, in looking at fraud, in looking at compliance. Um, so we continue on there. With that, then you still have some trends around trying to look to develop sure. cross border at a lower price, yeah. more real time. It's it's a bit tricky. It's not it's not all easy. But there's a lot of developments there to exactly tackle that. Maybe one last thing is looking at API technology. I did mention the KYC kind of journey. Yeah. There's some things even on the API side with different institutions or with different service providers to get better KYC feeds mm -hmm. when they're updates and maybe to also better that whole experience. Sure. All right, that's interesting. Some very good advice weaved in there as well. So would you say that banks um, are well positioned then uh, to meet the demands of uh, this changing ecosystem in the market? Well, that I would have to answer with, with a resounding yes. yes. <laughs> I do think we're very well positioned, but I also think we have to be nimble. We have to be quick. We also have to get out of our own comfort zone. Right. I mean, banks, and I think a piece of that is just the way it is. We're large institutions. We have many people working for the banks. It's a legacy system, but we have to break some of those molds and really look at some of these changing technologies, changing these changing behaviors, the dynamic landscape, and then also kind of drive the innovation mm -hmm. and drive the creativity. But I do think to the question, we're very well positioned because we have the largest network. And, and I have to say, maybe there, Hannah, on a final note, I have to say today, if you look really, whether it's dollar, whether it's euro, whether it's GBP, if you look at payment capabilities, GBP from London to Sydney, it, the banks are very well positioned to make those and execute those for their clients. All right, so watch this space, it's safe to say. Please do. Dean, thank you so much for sharing your insights. I'll let you get back to the event so you can share them with the delegates as well. But thank you very much. Thank you, it's a pleasure.